Hi YouTube! It's finally time for the long-awaited video about getting my girls done. Stick around if you want to learn more about how I went from an A cup to Bazunga. <laughs> I also have my notes that I wrote down for you guys. I wanted to make sure I wanted to let you guys know about um, everything since consultation to now and the everything in between. So I'm gonna go through all my notes and then also answer some of y'all's questions that y'all left me. So let's get started. I had my surgery on August 16th, 2023. I got a bilateral breast augmentation with teardrop shaped implants. So they are silicone, also called gummy bear, um, which is a new thing now that all silicone implants are gummy bear, which means when if they were to bust open, like split, they inside the silicone wouldn't be seeping into your bloodstream. It's like a gummy bear. It's just like it'll just stay in place, if that makes sense. And these are textured, and then the brand is Sientra. The decision on picking that was really based off what my surgeon thought was best with my original shape of how my breasts were before surgery. And that was his suggestion for what I should do, and I agreed. I got my implants on top of the muscle. I decided to do on top of the muscle because my grandma, actually, her implants are on top of the muscle, and I just, doing my own research, which I did a lot of research before getting my curls done, um, I just liked how the on top of the muscle looked compared to under the muscle, but under the muscle is really popular now. Um, that's what my surgeon was telling me that he, that was his suggestion is to do under, but I wanted to do on top. There is more like risk for um, rippling, which I do get, but I just it's just a personal preference honestly everybody's going to be different for what they want so when you go in for surgery you can't go in asking for like a cup size because they don't measure off cup size they measure off cc's and for me i got 465 cc's just so y'all know like if you were to tell your surgeon that it depends how your size beforehand how you'll look with the cc's if that makes sense like I was an A cup. If I was a B cup and got 465 cc's, I would obviously be way bigger, right? So it's just like depending on, on you. My surgeon at the time thought that we could only fit 300 cc's and he said maybe 400 tops. I went in with the intention that I wanted the biggest that I could go. All the videos that I was watching, they were all like, go bigger than you want. Go bigger, go bigger, go bigger. And, um, We'll get into how I feel about the girls after I go through all my notes, okay? So I didn't have to make the final decision for what size I wanted until day of surgery. So I had until the day of to, to really fully decide what I wanted, but I knew I just wanted as big as I could get. So he had different implants and surgery. And so what he would do is he would put a balloon in and see if that would fit and then I know it's, uh, it sounds all complicating, but basically he was surprised because he was actually able to fit way more than he thought he could. So, woo. <laughs> I am a, I believe I'm a 34 double D. I can also do 32 triple D, but for Victoria's Secret, you have to like special order those bras. So I was like, I'll just stick with double D. So that was my goal. <laughs> I want a double D's baby. <laughs> After surgery, which went great, by the way, it went really smooth. I remember being really nervous when I went in, but my nurse was like really, really nice, thankfully, and I had my man with me, and um, obviously I don't remember. It was just I went to sleep, and then I woke up with it just... I honestly don't remember how I felt when I woke up, but you can't tell how big you are. I remember that. I couldn't tell, like... I just, I just, I knew that they were in there, but it was just like so compressed and so up here. Like it was just, it was way different. So don't freak out. Like first couple weeks, the girls, even the first couple months, the girls might look a little crazy. So I'm getting ahead of myself. <laughs> Let's go to the first week after surgery. So the day after surgery, 
mind you, I'm not allowed to get jazzy two months prior of surgery. So I was on a long tea break. After surgery, he said I was allowed to have gummies, you know, special gummies, uh, but no smoking for another six weeks uh, because of the scars of her how they were still healing. And he wanted to make sure that nothing would interfere with the scar healing. And I agreed, but I was allowed to take gummies. And so as soon as I got home, mind you, I had my surgery in the morning and you're not supposed to have food. So I have no food in my belly and I took one gummy and boy, when I tell y'all, I was so elevated. So just a warning. I know it's kind of a special circumstance. I don't know. I know everybody doesn't get jazzy who gets her girls done, but just in case you do, you know, make sure you have food in your belly before you take that first gummy because I was uncomfortably elevated. Like it was, it was really bad. So the first week, the mornings were the worst. I remember waking up and it would just be the most pain. Uh, my chest being up to my chin was really uncomfortable. And I had to stay in the same bra, I think like 48 to 72 hours. So no showers, like don't take the bra off, like you have to keep the compression. And I had to stay in bed. I had to be like laying down for the majority of the time. And I remember it would hurt so bad if I were to laugh or sneeze. <laughs> and I got insanely bloated as well um, after surgery, which is totally normal. I didn't want to take the pain medication, but I did take um, the muscle relaxers. So I didn't do any pain meds, but I did do the special gummies and the muscle relaxers. And then a bunch of other medications you had to take on top of it, like to help with uh, no infections happening and stuff like that. So be prepared to take a, a bunch of meds after surgery and it would hurt to just like move my arms. So I couldn't, I obviously could not lift my arms above my head. I had to wait several weeks to do that about five days after surgery. So I was really blessed to have a great partner to be able to help me with my daughter and everything else. And y'all, most of y'all know I work from home. So that was, I was really grateful that I was able to spend the time to rest because it was a lot. I was, it took me almost two weeks, I think, to feel fully recovered. And even then I was still in a little bit of pain. Uh, so everybody's different in that. I remember I would get comments from people being like, gosh, it's not that bad. Like I only had to stay in bed for a day, like good for you, but everybody's different. <laughs> so don't be too hard on yourself if you feel like your healing's taking longer, but obviously just be aware of your body as well. If, if you notice anything off, hopefully your doctor is really good with communication like mine is. By the way, <laughs> I haven't even shouted out my surgeon yet, but I live in Tucson, Arizona. So if you're in Arizona, I went to Larson Plastic Surgery. Uh, so I saw Dr. Ethan Larson. He was amazing. The staff was amazing. Five stars, 10 stars, whatever. So you have to keep your bra on for 48 hours and no showers. And I remember the first time I took my bra off, I felt like I was going to pass out, y'all. Like, I think just the shock of seeing the girls, the shock of, like, the compression being, like, released, it was all a lot. So just be prepared and careful for that when you first take it off. Make sure you're, like, taking your time. Take it easy. Because I remember being like, oh, my. <laughs> got so dizzy. So. I saw my surgeon six days after surgery and that's when he was saying that it was safe to move my arms. You know, it was okay. Like I would be really scared to do too much. And he said that the stitches, they were like dissolvable stitches, but it wasn't, it wouldn't take just a little thing to make them like open. Like they were really strong because you'll, you'll feel really sensitive and like scared, which is totally normal, but your body's strong and it's, and it, and it likes to heal. So Day eight was when I started to have a little bit more energy and I was starting to feel good. So just so y'all know, again, everybody's different. Payment for my girls. So my girls cost about, I think they're about seven grand, roughly. And with my surgeon, I was, I'm able to do monthly payments. That can all just depends on your surgeon's office and all of that. And if you get approved. So I was really lucky because like the first credit that I tried, I tried to approved for the, a different company and they like 
only approved me for just a little bit. And then the second time, the second company that I applied for the credit, they were like full, fully supported the whole uh, income. So I was just like, oh my God. So that was a really cool perk. You could, just so y'all know, some people think you have to pay them like in full right before you get surgery. That's not my case. All right. So where were we? Back to the healing. We're on day 10. And I remember that I was like feeling really confident and feeling really good. And of course, I'm also still in, in getting jazzy on the gummies. So I remember on day 10, my best friend was coming over. And so I was feeling good and decided to clean my entire house. And then the next day, not even like that night and the next day, I felt like fever sick. Like I was like, what the heck? I w overworked my body. So even if you're starting to feel good, like just be patient and be kind and take it slow because it's, you went, your body went through so much. The healing is just, you have to be patient with it. I was not patient and I was like really regretting it that next day. And then that was also the same time I was seeing a little bit of leaking slash bleeding coming out of my stitches, which is totally normal. Just you, you, you should be able to be able to look at your body and, and know like, oh, this isn't right. Like the, the discharge was, a little, you know, clear. It didn't look like it was infected or yellow or anything. Of course, I still told my surgeon, but just so y'all know, too, totally normal. Twelve days after I remember my implant, I have a video because I recorded the whole thing for my on my Tiki Talk. I remember making a video being like, my implant feels so weird. Like I thought something was wrong. I thought it like moved. It kind of felt like it was upside down. Like it just felt really weird. And it's probably it was because the girls are settling. Like they do take about a whole year to settle. So they're, 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 they're doing their thing. You know, they're trying to drop and heal and get into position. So I think that's what was happening. But just so you know, like sometimes you might feel real weird, but it's mostly probably okay. Um, I did have to sleep on my back for two weeks, which I thought was going to be really hard, but it ended up not being that bad. And then you could slowly start like sleeping on your side. I never thought that I would be able to sleep on my belly again, but I do. I currently still will sleep on my belly. Um, I was afraid of the week. You know, <laughs> you never know. Uh, yoga is a little difficult. I'm sorry I keep, if I keep getting a little sidetracked, but it is an adjustment and again i went from nothing to a whole lot of something so it was a lot for me to adjust three weeks after i remember my skin being really itchy another thing that's normal just try not to itch just try to rub <laughs> that was a little awkward movement right there i remember not having any feeling in my nip and nips for the first couple months which is totally normal and that was one of my biggest concerns was i was afraid i was gonna lose the feeling forever because I remember somebody telling me that. They were like, you're going to feel in your nipples ever again. And I'm like, what? <laughs> that is not the case, at least for me. They became more sensitive once I got the feeling back in them. They, they are numb for, again, the first couple weeks, maybe even like a month or two. Bah, bah, the feeling sure did come back. I'm telling y'all. <laughs> so, um, also at three weeks, you can start implementing the massaging. So if you have a partner... Have them do massages for you or you could do them but i remember my man would do them and it would it would hurt it, it would be a little painful but definitely want to be massaging the scar tissue and breaking it up and helping your implant settle better so fight fight through the uncomfortableness for a little bit it's worth it and then the first six weeks you want to have constant compression so um, I had to wear like these sports bras, like the zip up ones for the first six weeks um, and no wire bras until eight to nine weeks after. So that was something I was like so itching to go to Victoria's Secret as soon as I could. I was there, baby. I was so excited. I was like, I gotta know my cup size. And I was so excited to hear I was a double D, triple D, baby. But um. Those are my notes for my healing process. So now I'm gonna get into some of the questions and then like my thoughts and like how I feel about the girls. Also, I don't know if y'all are gonna be able to tell. So there is this thing right here, you can see. 
My surgeon believes that it's scar tissue. Not, he's not a hundred percent sure. <laughs> um, it was a lot worse. It is actually kind of getting better, but it used to be really prominent and it used to seem like it was like a band that was holding this girl up. Like this girl wasn't dropping like this one. Like I'd be like this. And, and, and um, I did have to go to physical therapy for that, which did help with my posture. So that is something I suggest if you can do. I mean, the physical therapy was for this, but I really enjoyed it for them helping me with like making sure my posture is good because after having girls, you want to slouch. And um, I have been having back issues and I don't know if that is because of the girls or just because I'm almost 30 and my body is just, you know, getting older. Um, cause it's not like, it's like, it's not like my shoulders are upper back. I've been having a lot mid lower back problems, but again, just really want to like work on your posture after getting the girls done. And I know not everybody goes from nothing to huge. Uh, this is just, if, if that is something you want to do, just prepare. It's a really big difference. I overall, I love my girls. I love them so, so much. The only things is it is a lot of rippling like my surgeon said um y'all can see while i'm moving and stuff the, the ripples it's just you know par for the course it, it, you can't really tell if you're unless you're really looking um that's honestly like my only negative that i have again it's been a year since i've gotten the girls done over a year now it did take a year for them to settle truly took a year for them to like um get looking like normal girlies but let's go to the questions that i had too because i did have some questions okay would love to know what's life been like after getting them done pros and cons and how do people treat you after getting them done i haven't noticed a huge difference in how i'm treated besides i don't get um offered like the kids menu as much anymore but people still are confused by like my age because i'm really short and blah 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 but that's like really the only thing i do notice when people are looking at them um but it's never been anything crazy that i've noticed like who knows if someone has treated me different because of the girls and maybe i just didn't notice but i also i haven't used them for 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 evil you know try to get free stuff or <laughs> get out of a ticket. <laughs> Haven't needed to do that yet with the girls, but I, I love, the, I just love them so much. I lived with no boobies for 28 years. Obviously I had them. I breastfed with them. Like they were very useful, <laughs> um, but I just, I feel way more sexy and it's not that I didn't feel sexy before. I don't really know how to explain it because I did make sure that I was confident in myself. Like I knew like if something happened and I just couldn't get the surgery, it wouldn't devastate me. Like I was happy with how I looked, but it's just something that I always wanted. Always. I just always watching the anime with the girls with the big girlies and like, see, I was working in the spicy industry at the time. So I was just really like, I really want my own pair like I couldn't even imagine it and I was just like life is about wanting what you want and this is what I want my man had was for it he didn't care either way he loves them now <laughs> just like I do I love um you know wearing different clothes I'm still like shopping for myself it's really funny I, so i told y'all as soon as i was able to i went to victoria's secret and i bought three bras and i don't wear them <laughs> so just a little heads up before you spend like so much money um i i love rocking without without a bra <laughs> it's really nice so it is they are nice though with the bra <laughs> as well let me find my other questions that i had oh. All right, someone asked if they hurt anytime. I do get random pains that will concern me. Like, I'll be like, ooh, like, I'll get them. I'll get some sharp pains, and I have no idea what it is. I um, see my surgeon next month because he's actually going to try to cut this band, this scar tissue, whatever it is. Um, I honestly might not even get it cut. We're going to see how that goes, and I'll keep y'all updated. But um, 
I do get little random pains. And so I've messaged my surgeon before explaining like the pains and they were asking if my girls felt really hard and they didn't. So I think that was a good thing. I think it's normal for our bodies to be like, still like, what the heck are these foreign things in my, inside of you, you know? <laughs> so, um, any back pain? Again, I don't know if it's correlated or not. It's really hard to tell. I've had issues like with my neck and back before getting the girls done. So who knows? Do I think I'll go bigger or smaller in the future? Definitely not bigger. Definitely not. If anything were to happen and like I had to go under again, I would probably go like a little bit smaller just to not have the rippling. But I, 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 I'd rather just like keep them. <laughs> Keep them how they are, you know. Hopefully nothing uh, nothing ever happens in the future. Did I get any side effects from them or do they make me feel any different? I'm really used to them now. Um, I didn't feel like a different person. You know, you just feel like like we got like a little upgrade, you know. Some of these questions, I'm sorry. I probably already, I already answered them, so what's the inspiration? I just have always wanted them since high school always just one of them for myself do they hurt when you sleep no again I can sleep on my tummy and they won't hurt but obviously if I'm like in a certain position directly on them they could be uncomfortable but yeah we did it I finally finished my girly update video sorry if it's all over the place um Comment if y'all have more questions because I would love to keep y'all updated on on the scar tissue and let y'all know how it goes. And I could do another video because I feel like this one was kind of a mess. <laughs> but I love making videos for y'all. And uh, my eyes are up here. No, I don't want to say that the whole time. <laughs> and I really hope I didn't miss anything. I'm going to like edit this back and be like, I forgot to say that. <laughs> but, but, I love y'all so, so much, and I'll see y'all in the next video. It's weird we didn't get jazzy in this one. Next time. <laughs>